Hello everyone, dear community, a warm welcome to this new video. It's great to have you back with us. Today, we have another ultimate power station for testing, which not only boasts a very large capacity, but also an enormous output of up to 2400 watts. What else this large power station has to offer, how it performs in the test, and whether it's worth the investment, we'll take a detailed look at in today's video. I would say, let's start right after the intro, but if you haven't already, Quickly subscribe to this channel now and activate the bell so you won't miss any future videos. You can find the current prices of this great piece of equipment in the video description below. And with that, let's get started after the intro. Whether outside in the garden as a mobile power supply, at home as an emergency battery, or on the go while camping, a power station brings many advantages. Today, we're testing a particularly large and powerful model from Fossibot, the F2400. What this powerful power station really has to offer, and whether it is worth the investment, we'll take a detailed look at in today's video. Starting with the contents of the package, we naturally receive the actual power station from the large product box, followed by an instruction manual. Several cables are also included. Optionally, there's also a suitable solar module available with which we can also charge the power station on the go. However, we can just as easily use our existing solar modules, but more on that later. When we first take a look at the exterior, you can see from the display dimensions that this is definitely a solid device. This is mainly because we've installed a decent capacity of over 2,000 watt hours, which also results in a high weight of 21.9 kilograms. The black plastic casing of this power station is made of thick and solid plastic and undoubtedly makes a very durable impression. Furthermore, as you can see, the power station has a total of four large rubber feet on the bottom, ensuring a secure and non slip stand. On the top, as you can see, there are two nicely sized handles on the right and left, which I find very comfortable to grip and, of course, allow for safe transportation of this relatively heavy power station. I also find it quite practical that the large power station offers a cover with quite a bit of storage space on the top between the two handles. This means that the cables included in the package are all stored here by default. Therefore, I don't have to carry the cables separately. I always have them directly with the power station. Alternatively, I can just as easily store my phone or similar items in here. Another advantage that the power station offers due to its large surface is enough space for several ports. These are all located on the front or on the right and left sides of the device. In the middle, as you can see, there's a nicely large built-in display. In this case, it's an LC display with a screen diagonal of 4.8 inches. In practice, this means that we can definitely read the display without any problems. The arrangement of the elements is also nicely clear. In the center is the current charge level and percentage. Slightly smaller below that is the remaining runtime based on the current consumption. This is shown on the right side in watts, and next to it, on the left, is the current input power, also in watts, matching the orientation of the ports. The power station can be activated by this large rubberized button on the right side and next to it is a rotary knob for setting the input power. This allows us to regulate the charging of the power station in several power levels. The ports for charging the device are located on the left side under this black cover, as you can see. In this case, there are two ways to charge the device. One is charging via AC and next to it is another XT60 connector. Regarding the input power, this power station looks really good. Normal charging purely via AC allows a maximum power intake of up to 1100 watts. In practice, this means the device is fully charged within two hours. If we want to push things to the limit, we can combine these two ports because with the adjacent XT60 connector, we can add another 500 watts. In practice, this enables fast charging in one and a half hours, which is very impressive for this capacity. As mentioned earlier, the package includes a suitable power cord and an appropriate adapter, so we can either charge the device directly from our vehicle or use our solar panels with this XT60 connection. 
FossetBot also offers a powerful solar module that we can use on the go. This solar module also makes a very good impression in terms of craftsmanship, is foldable, making it super easy to store, and can be transported easily thanks to its handle. The setup is quite simple. Within one or two minutes, the solar module is set up and connected to the power station. Regarding the solar module's performance, the manufacturer specifies a maximum of 200 watts. In practice, I've also tested this for you and was able to determine a maximum output of around 150 to 160 watts from the solar panel in direct sunlight. In practice, with this huge capacity, we can easily let the solar module charge the power station throughout the day. On the front, you'll find all the outputs of the power station. On the left side, there are a total of four 12 volt outputs one 12 volt car outlet with 120 watts, another XT60 connection with up to 300 watts, and two barrel plug connectors, also with 12 volts, but with a maximum of 36 watts each. On the right side, there are the more important USB ports, a total of six. At the top, there are two USB Type A ports with Quick Charge 3.0, each providing 36 watts. Directly below, there are two Type C ports with power delivery, each providing 20 watts, another 20 watt port at the bottom, and next to it, a USB Type C port with power delivery up to 100 watts, allowing us to charge larger devices like a laptop directly via USB Type C. In practice, I believe we definitely have enough ports to charge all our devices. If more power is needed, there are additional AC outputs on the right side. As you can see, the power station has three AC outputs, allowing us to operate or charge multiple devices simultaneously. The total maximum output is a substantial 2400 watts. In practice, I've thoroughly examined the power station for you and tested it. I started by measuring the AC output with an oscilloscope. As you can see, the measuring device shows a nice, clean, constant sine wave at 50 or 60 Hz. In this regard, there is definitely nothing to criticize. Next, I'll test the output power of the power station with various devices. 2400 watts is definitely a substantial amount. Whether the power station can actually maintain this consistently is another matter. I loaded the previously fully charged device with a constant 2000 watts. After a total of 15 minutes, I couldn't find any really impressive results. So, I extended the test, and after almost 30 minutes, the power station had already lost 50% of its battery charge, yet it still seemed extremely unimpressed. The fans were not running at full speed, and there were no performance drops to be seen. The only thing I noticed about this power station during the entire test is this. When the power station really gets going, there's always a slight plastic smell at the beginning. Otherwise, there's definitely nothing to complain about regarding its performance. This is also reflected in the diagram. As you can see, compared to other power stations already tested on this channel, the Fozzibot ranks very high in terms of constant performance. The noise level of the power station under load was also mentioned earlier. For this, I put the device under heavy load again and then conducted a noise measurement at a distance of 1 meter. As you can see, the decibel meter shows a value of just 39 decibels, which matches my impressions exactly. In its idle state, as I found, the power station is completely quiet because the fans do not run at all. Only when the temperature of the built-in battery cells or the internal electronics reaches a certain level do the fans start to spin slowly. Even at full speed, the power station remains extremely quiet, as can be seen in the graphic comparing it to other devices already tested. The fans of the power station are located on the right and left under foldable covers, which is also indicated by all the warning symbols. Before we put the power station into proper operation, we should definitely open these two covers to ensure that the fans provide sufficient air circulation inside. This can be somewhat annoying because every time I want to use the power station, I have to open these two covers. On the other hand, it also brings certain advantages. When the covers are closed, no dirt can get inside the power station. This makes the device perfectly suitable for outdoor use. Even under high load, I can only detect temperatures of around 40 degrees. Nevertheless, it's always advisable to open the covers during use. Finally, the most important aspect of this power station is its capacity and efficiency. 
The power station uses high-quality lithium iron phosphate cells, which are not only safer but also more durable compared to lithium ion cells. Specifically, this model has a solid capacity of 2,048 watt hours, which is really a lot. Calculated based on the weight, as you can see in the diagram, we have an energy density of around 93 watt hours per kilogram, which puts this model at the top compared to others already tested. In practice, I measured the capacity for you to determine the efficiency of this power station. I consistently drew 100 watts from the 12 volt output and was able to demonstrate a capacity of 1,705 watt hours. Compared to the stated capacity, as you can see from the graph, this results in an efficiency of about 83%, which is not top notch, but still okay. In summary, I can confidently say that the Fossabot F2400 is definitely a solid overall package. For anyone looking for a large power station that not only has a lot of capacity, but can also deliver a substantial amount of power, is UPS capable, and remains quiet under load, this device is definitely not a bad choice. You can find the current prices of this power station to support this channel in the video description below. Thank you very much for your support. Otherwise, I would say, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up to support my work. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to this channel and activate the bell to avoid missing any videos. And with that, I would say, stay healthy, take care, and see you next time. Goodbye.